we'll see how the law is applied differently in different regions, substantively. Uh, and you need to appreciate those variances in how you design your projects and how you take on some of these, uh, uh, these project challenges. So the first project I want to talk to you about is uh, Pinkston Hydro Project, which is located south of Revelstoke in the interior of British Columbia. And uh, it's a 45 megawatt project. It has 590 meters ahead. And ahead is the difference in the water level elevation between the head pond and the powerhouse uh, turbine location. And uh, it cost about $70 million uh, back in 2004. And this is a picture of the intake area. Uh, and this is the intake building. We get about 35 feet of snow at the intake uh, in, the, in the middle of the winter. So it's an uh, interesting uh, design in that we have our head pond located up here, an upper tunnel, a shaft, a lower tunnel, a small short a section of peg stock, and then the powerhouse down by Upper Arrow Lake. It's about four and a half kilometers of tunnels, a shaft, and pen stock. And we go right through a, a, a mountain which is called Pinkston Ridge. There's a photograph from across Arrow Lake looking towards Pinkston Ridge. So you get an understanding of what the tunnels did going through that, that part of the, uh, the mountain. And here we are in September building in the snow. And that's what happens when you're building an alpine alpine. And you have to be prepared for that kind of thing. And the problem is when you're doing work out in remote areas is that you uh, have a little bit different climate in here in the cities. And our design here is a fairly unique design. It was one of the very first dams ever adopted with using a method that we used, which is a sheet pile core dam. And that allowed us to build a dam in about nine weeks in this kind of conditions. A similar dam of the same size and volume was built in southern Alberta here using traditional techniques took two, two, two and a half years. So it's those kind of innovations that we've had to employ in order to make our technologies work in different uh, climates. That, there's the finished product. Uh, the intake building here, the short dam and sheet pile. And this head pond here, I think I have another shot. Uh, is where we uh, staged all of our, our work area and uh, processed our gravels and, and laid down our materials. And then that became the interior of the, of the head pond. This head pond is about 24 hours of daily shaping storage so that we can dispatch energy at different times of the day to meet uh, daily shaping demands. The nice thing about this is that when we are finished with the, the, the gravel area and so forth, we left it all complex and left habitat in there. And the fishery population in this, uh, we, I should note that we are above the fish zone in, in, this, in this particular project. However, fish were introduced artificially by uh, sort of some misguided policies about 30 years prior. And uh, they came out of the lakes that were stocked way above the fish zone. And those fish were dying off. They just weren't going to be able to survive over time. They found our reservoir and they just loved it. And now it's you know, a huge fishery and a, a, real, a real fishing mecca in the local knowledge area. So this is what it looks like in the wintertime. And uh, normally we don't put buildings on our intakes, but because of the high snow loads that we get in this area, then for operational purposes, we said that would be a good idea. But the tunneling was an interesting uh, exercise, and it was a, a major challenge for a small hydro developer to take on such a risky project, four kilometers of, of, of tunnel, um, in a, as a runner river uh, type arrangement. And um, not only that, but we began building this project without a contract, without a power purchase contract. And that is a huge, huge risk. And the reason we did that is that we had a partner called Great Lakes Power, now known as Brookfield. Um, <clears throat> who had a lot of an interest in Washington State. And our proposal was that we were going to sell our power to the states if BC didn't want it. Uh, BC sort of woke up and they decided to give us a contract capital for construction. <laughs> so sometimes you sort of build it and they will come, kind of business <laughs> management. $70 million gamble. <laughs> there I am inside the tunnel. You can see that the, the, the tunnel is relatively small relative to the size of the pipe. When you walk two kilometers in beside that pipe, it gets a little dark. 
we invented a few things to, to build this project, and one of them is this, uh, this uh, train, and actually a couple props from the UFC here helped us do the design this uh, using uh, uh, the same uh, wheel bogies that we use for loading airplanes. Uh, because the tunnels, although we draw them straight on the, on the, on the drawings, they don't end up being, being straight. And the, you have to design systems that can manipulate long straight pieces of pipe through a very windy tunnel. And then the pipe stock ends, down, uh, ends up down in Powerhouse, the bifurcation here. And then you have the completed uh, Powerhouse. This contains three turbines. There's our uh, substation right along the shorelines of the Arrow Lake. The outlet from this uh, goes down through the trees through a natural drainage course. And when you're on the lake, you cannot even see the powerhouse, but you see the outlet coming out. It looks like a stream entering back into the, into the, uh, into the uh, lake. That's the type of turbines we have. There's three turbines, 45 megawatts. And we also had a maintenance chalet built adjacent to the powerhouse. It's a pretty risky task to go into these uh, mountain passes in the winter period. They go in by snowmobile, and um, sometimes uh, with the avalanche risks, we don't want guys going in and out at certain times. So we had uh, living accommodation on site, so when they go, do go in, uh, they can stay and come out in a safe period of time. These plants are fully remote. You can operate them on your BlackBerry. They um, completely run independent of any human um, interjection, but we do pe send people out just to, to do the look through and, and do some of the maintenance work from time to time. <clears throat> so that's the powerhouse on the, on the shoreline of the Earl Lake. Next project is uh, Mampong. This is on the uh, near Squamish, which is about halfway between Whistler and Vancouver. And uh, <clears throat> this was a a real typical run of river project. What was unusual about it is that there was already a hydro project on this river, and we were building upstream of that hydro project. And therefore, any of the flow that we took had to be made, uh, made sure that it was un un uninterrupted and delivered to the, the next hydro plant downstream, otherwise there was going to be some issues. And so for that reason, this project was the first project in BC to ever have a full output bypass system integrated into its design. There's the waterfalls that were in, in the proximity of the intake area. Uh, it was on an exterior commercial as a kayak route. And one of the challenges that we had was that, that it was defined as a kayaking river. Well, when we showed them the photographs of the, the movie set that they had set up with all the ropes and things and pulleys that they had attached to the kayaker as they went down these falls, they realized that you couldn't do this and survive. So then they decided, well, maybe it wasn't so navigable after all. <laughs> so we blocked, uh, built a, a rock cut channel beside those falls, and the diver that's the diversion into our intake works, which is located at the end of that rock cut channel. And on the, uh, oops, on the uh, left side here is the uh, intake to the power uh, to the penstock, which is the pipe down to the powerhouse. And this is a sluice way for us to sluice any gravels or materials that accumulate on a continuous basis back into the river so that we don't change the, uh, the natural um, uh, uh, gravel balance in the rivers. And that's the outlet of that sluice way back into the river. And this pipe right here is our, our minimum inflow stream uh, pipe, which constantly releases flow no matter what goes on with the plant. We always have a minimum flow that's being released. This, this, at this time, we're doing a test, so that's not offering it full of at, at that time. And this is the weir that we ended up putting across the, the rock uh, channel that was there uh, with a, this is a rubber dam, which uh, we use a lot in the hydro industry to uh, regulate uh, flows out of the head ponds for flood passage. You can see there's a person right there, so get an understanding of the size of this. So when we call it small hydro, it's sometimes not so small. Again, we had a small tunnel in this one. That's a pretty short one, only a couple hundred meters. On the other side of that tunnel, this this set of pictures I'm going to show you is a picture that a set of pictures that was adopted by the uh, regulatory agency, uh, Ministry of Forest in British Columbia, as the right way to do right-of-way development, and it, it's used today as an example of uh, the way that they want.